we did surface area last week, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's it's a nice sort of mild extension of uh, uh, volume uh, and arc length and that kind of thing. And I just thought about it, and I don't have answers to your questions that I sent out. So I'm sorry about that. Uh, but <laughs> Now, as far as the uh, the next thing that, uh, that we're going into here, uh, I know there's a physical application that we got to talk about. Uh, most uh, importantly, work, uh, I think is what it is. So, <coughs> now if you've taken a uh, physics class, what is uh, what is work anyway? Force times distance. It's force times distance, yeah, or integration of f with respect to d or something of that nature, yeah. So, if you have the work done, uh, if all you're doing is using a force uh, to move something by a distance, it's just force times distance. So uh, you take calc 3, it'll actually be a dot product of for, uh, force and distance. Uh, so uh, here, it's, it's going to be everything one-dimensional. Uh, but we've got two main kinds of problems, I guess maybe three, uh, that we're going to be working with. So uh, in you know a high school physics class, you would run into the case where you're just moving an object of fixed mass by a fixed distance. Uh, and uh, and it's just multiplication. Um, the issue is, what if your force is changing, uh, or what if your mass is changing, right? been doing the last couple of um, class periods where we break something into tiny parts, take a measurement on a tiny part, and then add those measurements up. We're going to keep in with that theme today. <laughs> Instead of breaking a physical object up, what we're going to be doing is breaking this quantity up. Now given that what we're working with is a product, we're going to have two kinds of situations. Either we're going to be breaking up the force into small parts, or we're going to be breaking up the distance into small parts. And it's kind of category specific based on um, which way we do that. So. First example you come across is a uh, uh, work done by a spring. All right, now if you've got the force uh, done by a spring, uh, is it Hooke's law? Mm -hmm. Does Hook have an E on it? Yes. Okay. Okay. Somebody tell me what Hook's law is. F equals negative k. X equals either kx or negative kx, depending on whether k is positive or negative. I guess that makes sense. So, but the point is, f is a positive multiple of x, where, what's x? It's mm -hmm. So it's not the length of the spring, it's the amount that the spring is stretched beyond its natural length, right? <laughs> Okay, and I would think that probably uh, whether you use negative kx or positive kx depends on whether you're talking about um, it's a directional thing, right? Because if you've got a uh, if you've got a spring that you're pulling, right, it's going to be applying this force, but then you're going to be applying this force, right? So uh, they're just they're going in opposite directions. One of them being negative, I guess probably this one is the force exerted, exerted by the spring. Uh, the other one is going to be the force exerted by you fighting the spring. <clears throat> so, all right. So this is the amount it takes just to hold it at a particular length. So suppose it takes, uh, what's a unit of force, Newtons? All right, suppose it takes 10 newtons of force to hold a 5-meter spring at the large 
large spring. Well, you know what? Everything's in meters, though. And uh, all right, so let's do like a 0.5 meter spring uh, at uh, 0.7 meters. I was doing this uh, same problem when I first started teaching, and I was trying to make the numbers easy. And I didn't realize that I was saying something ridiculous. I had written up here, suppose we have a 90 meter spring. And um, that's, that's a big spring. Yeah, I mean, it's a joke. They're using it to shoot trains from Orlando to Daytona, you know. So it, like, <laughs> you're, you're not going to see that. So, all right. Suppose it takes 10 newtons of force to hold a 0.5 meter spring uh, at 0.7 meters. Now, what I want to know is how much work is done. Stretching this spring to 0.7 meters. You see where that's a different question, right? The force is used to hold it. The work is done to move it, right? Because you have to uh, have a force times a distance. Now, you would think that it might just be 10 newtons of force times 0.2 meters because that's a force and that's a distance, right? What's the problem with that argument? The amount of force you need to yeah, the farther you pull it out, the harder that spring's pulling back, right? So, all right, so what we need to do is figure out what this spring constant is. So I know that uh, 10 newtons is equal to whatever negative K is times uh, 0.2, that's the amount that's displaced. And that tells me that K is going to be what? 50 or negative 50? Okay, so. K is going to be negative 50. <coughs> so let's see. So what I want for work should be, I'm going to be integrating something. Now, in this case, what I'm going to be doing is breaking up the distance into tiny parts, right? Because my force is variable, but I can assume that for a very short distance, it takes about the same amount of force here as it does here, right? So in this case, I'm going to be breaking up the distance, which I'll call x. And what I've got is, if I calculate the small amount of work necessary to hold to stretch this from x to x plus dx, uh, that should be what? It should be 50x times dx, right? Because this is a force and this is a distance. So that's what I'm integrating. All right, and I want to integrate that from what? Zero to point two? Okay, so integral of 50x is 25x squared. And zero and point two. Let's see what that is. I get one. Yeah, okay. All right, what's the unit on that? Newton meter? Oh, yeah, okay. So one joule. Oh, that makes sense, yeah, because work is, or uh, energy is the capacity to do work, right? So work units is going to be the same thing as energy units. Okay, sorry, it's been a while since I've been out of physics. All right. <clears throat> what else can we run into besides spring? <laughs> now I know when you uh, when you take a differential equations class, you work with mass spring systems and things like that. Uh, so it's the idea that uh, if you have a, uh, a mass on the end of the spring and you pull it and let it go, what's it going to do? It's going to oscillate, right? Uh, you take that course, you can actually see how that comes out of the differential equation and that kind of. So it's a neat course. <laughs> so I assume a lot of you uh, who has to take DigiQ here. Probably most of you, if you're engineering, yeah, you're you're gonna have to take every every physical process is governed by a differential equation, or at least that's how we know how to describe it. All right, so the other kind of thing that you see sometimes is uh, buckets, pulleys, and things like that. So <laughs> let me describe a scenario for you. All right. Suppose that we're lifting a bucket of water Okay uh, 
let's say the, uh, the bucket weighs, uh, what, five kilograms? Okay. It originally contains, let's say, 20 kilograms of water. As we lift it out, or as we lift it, what is leaking out? At a rate of, what's it? Four bananas a minute. Four bananas a minute? That, uh, well, how much does a banana weigh? <laughs> I don't know. I think it was apple <laughs> I like these these questions. These are good. All right, so let's let's say it's a uh, well, a banana probably weighs what, like a like a quarter of a pound. Is that right, or is it lighter than that? Yeah, it sounds right. Okay, quarter of a pound is uh, what about an eighth of a kilo? So one eighth of a kilogram per uh, per minute. Uh, let's see. And do we want minutes? Yeah, that'll work. Okay, so we're lifting this thing. At uh, let's say four meters per minute. <coughs> okay, so how much work is done? Lifting this thing uh, from ground level to a height of, let's say, 16 meters. Okay. <clears throat> so I have to figure out what sort of thing that, uh, that we're dealing with here. Now, do you see what we have is, again, we have a force that's changing uh, based on time and based on where we are, right? Because what's our only force in this situation? It's gravity, gravity, right? Yeah, I mean, we're pulling up, we're fighting gravity, but the only force we're pulling against is gravity. If those springs here, uh, that's all it is. So, all right. So, the force on the water, which is just gravity, is going to be what? Well, it needs to be the amount of water plus the mass of bucket. Okay, now what I've got is mass measurements. Uh, what I want is a weight measurement, right? So what do I need here? Yeah, the gravitational constant was a 9.81 meters per second squared. And uh, I'm trying to think about this. If I've got things per minute, no, that shouldn't affect it, okay. so. The amount of mass plus mass of the bucket. Okay, so how much water is in there? You want to do this with respect to time? We can do it with respect to time or with respect to distance. It shouldn't matter. Um, Does it need to be in seconds? Yeah. yeah, let's do that then. All right, so let's say it's lifting at uh, one eighth of a kilogram per second. And that uh, we are lifting it at four meters per second. Changes the problem a little bit. That's all right. So no worries. Okay. So our main thing is we got to figure out how much uh, how much stuff is in there. So all right. If I've got um, what did I start with? Twenty kilograms of water. And how much am I losing? I'm losing one eighth of it per second. So it would be twenty minus one eighth times t. Is that right? And I've got a five kilogram bucket, okay, and that is going to be, so it'll be, and times 9.81. So I'm looking at, what, 25 minus 180T times 9.81. Okay, so that's the amount of uh, force at time T, right, because that's what's pulling down on it, it's just gravity. All right. How far does it travel? I'm 
the term t, the term t plus dt. Well, we are going, what, four meters per second? And so if I travel for dt seconds, <coughs> it's actually going to travel a distance of four times dt, right? <coughs> uh, just because it'll be the time times, uh, times four uh, will give you the distance. Okay, so it looks like the work done ought to be, now if I integrate the amount of work done moving it from here to here, kind of like with the spring problem, uh, what I'm looking at is the integral of 25 minus 1at of 9.81 times 4 dt. So you're just integrating a linear function. All right, and where are we lifting this from? Yeah, so we're going from 0 to something. If I integrate from 0 to 16, I think I've probably lifted too far, right? Where am I after 16 seconds? I'd be at height 64, not at height 16, right? So... I'm doing four meters per second, I probably need to integrate from zero to four, right? So, <clears throat> this we can do. I can factor out four and 9.81. Uh, integral of 25 minus 180t is going to be 25t minus 116t squared, zero to four. All right, 25 plus 4 is 100, minus 16 over 16 is 1. Okay, so it's 4 times 9.81 times 99. And just to get a numerical answer on this thing. All right, so this is 38. 84, 76, and that's joules, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Minus 1 over 25t minus 1 over 16. Hold on. I meant something easy. I can't tell what it is. I integrated, now we're talking about like right here? Yeah. What's the integral of t, of, of t? Yeah, one half t squared, right? So in one eighth comes a half of 16? Yeah. Have I done it wrong? I mean, I might have, I just can't see it. So. Okay, so that's what we're looking at here. Um, how can we change this question up? Uh, I know a lot of people did these in uh, high school physics just by getting like the, uh, I think the, the average height times the average mass or something like that, and it would, uh, it would give you the same question. Uh, or you could take the average mass times the distance. Uh, the only reason you can do that is because the average happens to be right in the middle because mass is decreasing linearly, right? All right, so suppose we have a question where that's not happening. So, example, all right, suppose we're lifting a five pound bucket. And it originally contains nothing. All right, as we lift it, pouring into the bucket. Uh, at, uh, let's say, according to W of T is uh, E to the 
0.042. Okay. <clears throat> so in other words, I have an increasing or an exponentially increasing amount of sand pouring into this thing. Okay. Now I'll, I'll fill you in on what stupid things we're assuming in just a minute. And all of these things we're making completely unrealistic assumptions. But, uh, but we'll get to that in a second. So suppose we've got exponential amounts of sand pouring in here as we lift it. All right. So also, we lift the bucket at uh, 10 feet per second. OK. And so the question is, how much work is done in the first 20 seconds of lifting the button? Okay, so <clears throat> now can you think of one unrealistic assumption that we're making here? Yeah, in a five pound bucket, right? Yeah, fair enough. But uh, now, in all honesty, uh, even the 0.04 T is probably not, it's not going to be that big that fast. But uh, what's 0.04 times 20? Yeah. 0.04 times 20, yeah. Oh, it's 0.8. Oh, and e to the 0.8 is, um, yeah, like 2.22. So I've only got like two pounds per second coming in at that point. You know, so that, uh, <clears throat> so it's adding in and it's, it's adding in faster, but it, it's not getting totally out of control. If I had a bigger exponent, there'd be one. What I'm thinking of is this is probably going to affect the acceleration of the bucket, right? Because you've got sand that's pouring down into it and it's going to be knocking it down some. Uh, so I guess we kind of have to make a dumb assumption like, uh, like this. The, uh, it's not affecting our acceleration at all. Our sand is just sort of magnifying itself in the bucket. Uh, so let's assume our sand in the bucket is reproducing by budding or something. So, all right. So, <clears throat> so far we're okay. Uh, I know they're never going to give you a problem where you were lifting the bucket at anything other than a linear rate, uh, you know, or at a constant rate, because if you were accelerating the bucket, you have to deal with how that acceleration compounds the acceleration of gravity and that kind of thing. So. Uh, it's, it's a pain of going through that problem before, and I know they're not going to throw that at you. So, <clears throat> at least not in this class. All right. So, let's see if we can figure this out. So, your work is going to be the integral of something. Uh, we need to figure out how much uh, weight is in this bucket. Now, I've got 5 plus what? Just plus e to the 0.04 times t. Because that's the weight of the bucket, that's the weight of the sand. All right. And what else? Yeah, 10 dt. And that's it. So I'm lifting this for 20 seconds, so it should be 0 to 20. Do you see why the first 20 seconds is different than the, you know, the 20 seconds after that? We've got more sand in there. So, all right, this should be reasonable. Oh, and um, let's see. You notice I don't have a gravity measure in here. Do I need to have 32 feet per second in there? Yeah. My claim is no. Because the falling rate of the sand is not because you're down on the plane? It's not because there's no gravity in the English. Oh, because um, sand is already in work, right? It's in weight units, yeah. right? The sand in the bucket, the pound is a, is a unit of weight, right? That's a force unit already. Uh, so I don't have mass, I have weight. That's the difference, yeah. So, I'm integrating with respect to the time, yeah. So the uh, so distance doesn't make too big of a deal. Uh, everything's in feet. Uh, yeah, English measurements, unless it's given as pound mass instead of pounds, um, it's uh, you don't have to worry about the gravitational constant. So. Just keep in mind, no gravity in England. So, all right, this is 10 times, if I integrate this, I got 5t plus what? 1 over 0.04 is 25, is that right? 
25E.04D. Uh, and this will be evaluated at 0 and 20. Let's see what this is. Why are we integrating by? Because the weight of the bucket remains the same. It is. But, um, let's see. Okay, think about this as two separate problems. What's the work done to move the bucket? It would be 5 times 10 times 20, right? And so if I integrate 5, uh, I'm going to be multiplying 5 times 10 and then multiplying by 20 minus 0. So, because keep in mind, this isn't the work, this is a force, right? So even though it's constant, uh, you do have to put it in there. All right. Alright, so let's see, 5 times 20 is 1,500, alright, and 0.04 times 20, 0.8, e to that, about 0.04, that's 55, plus 100, alright, so I've got 10 times 155, 0.64, Minus, if I plug in zero, do you see where I get 25 instead of zero? So minus 25. 10. And I'm getting 1306.39. Uh, what's the unit on this? The uh, foot pounds, right? The because uh, the English unit, yeah. So it's it's a force times the distance. I'm pretty sure it's just four, uh, foot pounds. It's the same as a uh, torque units if you've seen that before. So all right. So that's that's about all the variety you're going to run into with bucket problems. Uh, the other kind of uh, physical applications that we run into uh, is in a manner of pumping liquids out of tanks. Uh, now in these, these are fun because we're making all kinds of unrealistic assumptions. Let's say it is radius four meters, pretty big tank. All right. Uh, it is filled with what's a good liquid to put in this tank? Jack Daniels. Boring. Jack Daniels. Um, okay. <laughs> to a depth of, uh, we'll have to, we'll look up the density of that, it'll be alright. So, uh, to a depth of, now it's four meters, so let's say it's a depth of six meters at the center. So our large liquor bowl is up to about here, and filled that far. Okay, so... We need to pump the liquid out of this thing through the top. So, <laughs> how much work is required? Okay, so, we see what our question is. Now, let's take a look at this, what's happening here. <coughs> I look at this thing from the side. This is what I'm looking at. Now, this thing isn't moving, right? Can you see where different parts of this liquid can go different distances, right? The stuff at the top only goes this far, and the stuff at the bottom goes a lot farther, right? So what we're going to end up doing, the only force that we're fighting, I'm assuming, is gravity. Now this is where the unrealism begins, right? Because obviously these particles are going to be bumping into one another and whatnot as you get them out of here. Uh, so what I'm assuming is the amount of, the way I'm, I'm getting this liquid out of here is to take one single layer of atoms and levitate them out the top of the tank, right? That way what we're doing is just fighting gravity and that's it. 
<coughs> so if I've got a layer right here, the other thing you see is, depending on the shape of the tank, I've got layers of different sizes, right? The layer at the bottom is very small, the layer in the middle is the biggest one, and so on, right? So we have to account for that somehow. So let's break this into parts. Let's say slice this liquid up into flat uh, slices, right? Uh, so it's parallel to the ground. All right. The work necessary uh, to pull one slice out all right so it's going to be a force times a distance now our force is uh, weight right? <coughs> so it's going to be mass times gravity times distance and since I'm looking at a liquid, the way I'm going to get mass is to have a density and a volume. So anytime you do a tank problem, you're going to have these pieces here. Uh, you'll have a density, a volume, a gravity, and a distance. Of course, the only time you, have, you don't have gravity is if you're in uh, American units or whatever. So, all right. So let's see. Oh, would you mind looking up the density of Jack Daniels? 0. 0.94 kilograms per liter. Awesome. Okay. You already did it. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Okay, so 0. 0.94 kilograms. Okay. And we're going to have to uh, think about this. This is kilograms per liter. Do I need to do a unit conversion on this? Because I'm going to be getting this thing in cubic meters, right? Okay, so this is 940 um, kilograms per cubic meter. Is that what that turns into? Okay, yeah, I'm not going to worry too much about the unit conversion. That's some 1301 stuff. So, all right. Oh, what do you notice about this, by the way, that's not terribly surprising? It's a little bit lighter than water, right? That makes sense. Well, kind of that's how stills work, right? So, all right. <clears throat> so, our work done, well, let's call it delta W for the work done for one small slice. It's going to be 940. All right, times. Now, we need the volume of one of these things. What shape is this, uh, this thing going to be? 